Hello, everyone. Today, we talk about the founding of DJI Robotics. The DJI founder turned his dorm room invention to a global company. Is a founder born or made? I hope the story of DJI helps illuminate the path of fellow entrepreneurs. The founder of DJI is Wang Tao or Frank Wang. He was not a top student in the classroom, but he has the intangible things formal education does not teach. This is his amazing, unbelievable story. At the end of the video, we'll reveal critical scripts for success from this story. Wang was born in Hangzhou, Zhejiang province. He showed an interest in flight and airborne device from a young age, but received mediocre grades as a school child. His parents are business people and engineers. The city of Hangzhou is a hub of business activities. For example, this is a city where Jack Ma built Alibaba. Chinese people know it is a city flourished with business mindset over hundreds of years of trade. Even in ancient times, it is a favorite place of emperors in Beijing's Forbidden City. This cultural immersion would later on prove important. Wang's dream from use is to build a self-flying radio-controlled helicopter that can follow him. He quit a college in China in sophomore year and transferred to the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. But he's lost the game. Fortunately, his final year project drew the attention of engineering professor Li Zexiang, following a class project to build a helicopter flight control system. Li has a degree from Carnegie Mellon University and Berkeley. Unlike pure academics, Li has business experience, being the founder of a company that makes motion controller. Professor Li discovered Wang, despite the fact his helicopter never flew for the judges, who gave him a C grade. Li subsequently brought Wang into the school's graduate program to give him more time. More time for what? To build the prototype in a dorm. Professor Li did not assign him projects, but just leave him alone to build. Did we say he's a good engineer? In 2005, Wang participated in ABU Robocon, and his Hong Kong UST team won third prize among teams competing from across Asia. Professor Lee not only played the role of an academic advisor, but a business partner and advisor. He later even invested 1 million yuan and hold 10% of DJI. This will be discussed later. The central crux of a drone is a flight control system. It is a microcontroller brain algorithm that maintains stability and flight. Wang's helicopter used the inertial measurement units to compensate for air velocity and other disturbances. After his work in the dorm proved successful on very low budget, orders starts to roll in from online geek forums. He then sold flight control components to universities and Chinese electric companies. The electric power companies wanted to fly over the power lines in remote areas. He earned $6,000, about 50,000 Chinese yuan at the time. After Hong Kong UST, he used a proceeds to move to a city next door, Shenzhen, and hired a small staff in 2006. His parents gave him 200,000 Chinese yuan. At that time, 200,000 Chinese yuan can support two staff engineers for two years. Shenzhen is a great place. You might know it as a world's factory, but the culture is like a Silicon Valley with factories. If Hangzhou was a site of Asian money, Shenzhen is a site of new money in China. It was transformed from a little fishing village near Hong Kong to a great metropolitan in less than one generation. Unlike many big cities in North America, Shenzhen is littered with factories that the locals call little giants. Actually, for DJI in Shenzhen Street, nobody would notice. This is just a regular world-class success in a great city. Every young people with a dream belong here. Initially, his company is located in a shabby apartment to save money and has trouble deciding what his company would do to supply the salary. At the time, his goal is to continue to sell the flight controller and try to grow to 20 people staff. As a matter of fact, Wang has no idea how large the market really is. With such unclear vision, the company struggled at first. There is a high degree of churn among employees. People come and go, attributed to Wang's abrasive personality and perfectionist expectations. What can you expect? He's a true nerd. 
Fortunately, his company found sales easily. The company sold a moderate amount of components during this period, but was always at the risk of going out of business. Remember, his launch runway is two years. In 2007, despite having some success, all engineers left. Some former employees take the product or technology to competitors. Only one clerk remains. The engineers would complain about having no shares or no race. It is easy for employees to be unhappy. At this point, the intangibles of a founder starts to shine. Professor Li gave him 1 million yuan. A family friend, Lu Di, provided US dollar 90,000 and managed the company's finance. He has 16% of shares. In typical Chinese companies, the CFO is very critical. The person knows a lot of financial secrets and must be totally loyal. Typically, the spouse or family members of a founder take this job. One must know the value of Lu Di. The trust and the infusion of talent is critical. Now Wang has true co-founders. In 2008, DJI's first flight control allows the helicopter to hover in air. At this point, the company actually can break even. He started to sell about 20 per month for 20,000 yuan each. The company starts to make about 4 million yuan revenue per year. The Ace One starts to sell well in 2010. Even great products cannot wait to be found. Selling and marketing takes 10 times the efforts than making it. In 2010, Wang hired a high school friend, Xie Jia, to run the company's marketing. Xie did not join empty-handed. He sold his apartment to join DJI. Xie later owned 14% of DJI by donating the apartment sales proceeds. Keep in mind at this point DJI is still just making toy helicopters not quad-propeller drones everyone is familiar with. Shenzhen and China is not big enough anymore. DJI began to cater more to drone hobbyists in markets outside of China. In 2011, Wang met a former television game show contestant, Colin Gwynn, at a trade show in the United States, and the two of them would found DJI North America, a subsidiary company focusing on mass-market drone sales. No one is perfect, no plan is perfect, but great people learn fast. Sometimes fortune comes to find you. A competitor, two years younger, Peng Bin, started to make quad-propeller drones in 2009 and quickly ramped to 20 million yuan a year of income. However, Wang did not like the quad-propeller idea initially. Peng's company quickly grew bigger, but Wang does not care. DJI, however, caught a very lucky event. A DJI distributor in New Zealand told Wang that GoPro cameras is in hot demand. GoPro was founded by Nick Woodman in 2002 in the Silicon Valley. This gave Wang the idea to integrate the photography equipment with a drone. Making such a flight control for stable photo taking and lens maneuvering is very challenging. His first model, Wukong M, quickly makes good sales. The model sells for $20,000. This also starts a love-hate relation between DJI and GoPro, lasting several years. In 2013, DJI released the first model of the Phantom drone, an entry-level drone which was significantly more user-friendly than any other drone on the market at the time. It can hover in air and return to the launch point on itself. The Phantom was a worldwide commercial success, but this success led to conflict between Gwen and Wang. Midway through the year, Wang made an effort to buy Gwen out, which Gwen refused. Gwen sued DJI and the case was settled out of court for reportedly $10 million. Gwen later joined 3D Robotics, which is founded by Chris Anderson, a former writer and editor-in-chief for The Wired magazine. There is a thoroughbred American team from the Silicon Valley area and have a war chest of $5 million from VC. 3D Robotics is located in Berkeley, California, close to headquarters of GoPro at Apple. It is hard to beat, but this is only the beginning. Many heavyweights throw their hats in the ring at the time. There are also Qualcomm and Intel trying to make efforts. There is a French company making parrot drones, founded in 1994, but one has enough local worries 
In China, there are over 300 competitors, including the company of Peng. Even Leijun's Xiaomi is involved. For entrepreneurs in Shenzhen, this is typically a death sentence if Xiaomi is interested in what you do. Xiaomi's reputation in Shenzhen is to duplicate and monopolize anything it chooses. The drone market is red hot to the extent VC investors is camping outside of DJI to lure DJI employees from the company to join competitors. There is no lack of smart and hardworking nerds, but none has a culture, vision, and heart of a champion. You see, if you succeed, you must beat a lot of people. For Wang, he must beat a lot of other talented young people who did not come from Hangzhou. Amazingly, DJI was able to defeat 3D Robotics. 3D Robotics' solo model with GoPro sold only 20,000 units and had to abandon 80,000 inventory units for loss. That is a lot of investor money down the drain. 3D Robotics had to give up on the drone market. DJI also connected with Apple to become a member of the Apple ecosystem. You might think that DJI can just grow on its own now. That is not the case. From 2013 to 2015, DJI finished five rounds of investment worth $200 million. In 2018, it breached $1 billion in one round. DJI even introduced the system of bidding for investors. Does DJI need the money? No, it does not need the money to operations. But DJI's investment is more like a private IPO, initial private offering. Instead of selling stocks to the public, it sells stocks to private investors. The market is critical to keep good people. In a way, this is how Wang shares the wealth with key contributors and enrich them, as well as himself. In 2015, DJI released Phantom 3, whose even greater popularity was in part due to the addition of a built-in live streaming camera. DJI becomes the largest consumer drone company in the world driving many of the competitors out of the market over the following year. In 2017, Wang became Asia's youngest tech billionaire. By 2020, DJI held nearly 77% of the U.S. market share for consumer drones, with no other company holding more than 4%. In 2017, many countries, including China, started to lock the flight space for drones. There are negative news associated with drones, such as terrorist attacks and safety concerns. Still, it sells over 400,000 Phantom model drones for revenues of $1 billion. In 2020, the company valuation is over 20 billion US dollars, with one worth approximately $5 billion. However, eventually, great companies can hit the ceiling. DJI starts to approach the total addressable market that Wang did not know before. Every great company needs to reinvent itself. It becomes another startup with a larger stake at risk. When you start from zero, you have zero to lose. When you restart with one million, you can lose a million. For now, the boy from Hangzhou is enjoying the adoration of the world, but not for long. Eventually, he has to pull another trick out of the hat. You can learn many things from this story. For example, embrace the future, do it. When you are young, there's nothing to lose. Get quality product, quality people, low cost, all together. Success is just to outlast everyone who wants to steal your success. Finally, here's a chance for every listener to chime in. What key facts surprise you? Would you call Wang a leader or a boss? Why? Are you more or less likely to try to become an entrepreneur? Feel free to comment below and lead a discussion. This is the end for this episode. Farewell, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make comments below, ask questions. See you at the next episode of Business Casebook. Thank you.